pledge their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor to a set of principles that are timeless and to fight for them. And when they did that, they knew it was an act of treason as far as the king and parliament were concerned. And it didn't, if you were a betting man, you wouldn't have bet on the colonists on July 4th, 1776. But they won and they persevered and those principles formed the basis, the foundation of this great nation. And it is why it is so great. And the principles that they enunciated in 1776 are as applicable today in 2011 as they were in 1776. Absolutely the same today. And it's because those principles are timeless. But we have to fight for them today just like they did 235 years ago. And unfortunately, we got plenty of opportunities to fight for these principles. Uh, but now it's with our own government. I have a little experience with this, just a little bit. When I ran for office in 2009, I talked about what we would do in, in a Cuccinelli Attorney General's office if the federal government overstepped its boundaries. And that we would do exactly what the founders had in mind for states, and that is we'd fight back. What a concept. My opponent uh, was extremely critical of that needless to say, and I think it's fair to say if you look back at everything of significance we've done in our office in the last year and a half, my opponent wouldn't have done any of it. Yeah. None of it. So remember, elections have consequences. Yep. They matter. It's a whole lot easier to change congressmen than to lobby congressmen. It's a whole lot easier to change senators than to lobby senators. Get the right one in the first place, and you don't have to lobby him. Walt Barbie, best compliment he ever paid me, uh, may he rest in peace. Walt Barbie said, you know, Ken, the great thing about you is we don't have to lobby you. <laughs> but, and you all know what he meant by that. Walt was one of the founders of the Family Foundation in Virginia. He got his start battling the school board over sex ed in Fairfax County in, 19, in the late 1970s. And boy, he just exploded on the political scene after that. What a blessing he was for Virginia. But we have, uh, boy, there's a guy we miss. But, um, you know, rolling out of that campaign, it only took one month for this administration, for this administration to start crossing those lines we talked about. When the EPA, I, I call the EPA the Employment Prevention Agency, <laughs> which is, seems very descriptive. Um, one month after I got elected, they rolled out their greenhouse gas endangerment finding and saying that CO2 and methane and four other greenhouse gases were so dangerous to human health, they had to be regulated. Now, mind you, we're all exhaling CO2. Yep. So just for fun, let's irritate Lisa Jackson all together. Everybody exhale at the same time. Ready? One, two, three. <sighs> Suck on that, Lisa Jackson. <laughs> now, I hate that policy. I can't stand it. It's incredibly destructive, economically destructive. And as she has said, this is the head of the EPA, economic consequences aren't my job, period. She said that. I'm sure the president appreciated her being so honest. <laughs> they will impose through this regime the same impact on us as cap and trade would have. Now this is the one and only job stimulus program of this administration and it's for red China. <clears throat> and it'll be very effective for China because all these businesses are going to have to close down or never open in the first place because we won't be able to operate them here. In addition it's going to cost families thousands of dollars a year once it's fully implemented. And what do we get for this? Well, 90 years from now, this is according to the EPA, it will hopefully reduce the temperature something a little less than two one hundredths of a degree centigrade. Won't that be great? Maybe. In front of the Senate, Lisa Jackson under oath said that was an immeasurable amount. 
For those of you from Rio Linda, that means you can't measure it. <laughs> so we're going to destroy the American economy, or at least put an enormous parachute on the drag racer, for no measurable benefit. And for those of you who weren't paying attention, you remember when that volcano exploded in Iceland? Well, in four days, it wiped out five years of all of the world's efforts to reduce CO2. Wow. Doggone that Mother Nature. She didn't sign Kyoto. <laughs> Can't believe it. But we wouldn't sue them just because we don't like the policy. That's not my job. That's what the elections are about. That's why elections have consequences. We only sue when they break the law. And in issuing that regulation, the EPA violated the law in a couple of ways. Um, my personal favorite was at the same, and this hasn't gotten any press at all, at the same time we sued them in court, we petitioned them. You petitioned the EPA by asking the EPA to do something. We asked them to reopen the whole process. Because you remember those climate gate emails? They came out after the public input was done. And the law says when there are new facts that are central to your finding that come out after you close the public comment period, you have to reopen it. Shall reopen. Now this administration struggles with the meaning of words. The dictionary gives them all sorts of trouble, but shall, you would think, is pretty simple. <laughs> well, in rejecting our petition, they filed a 360-page document huh. with over 50 references to new information to tell us why they didn't need to reopen the record for new information. Ooh. Only this administration could do something that schizophrenic <laughs> and actually think it's complying with the law. Yeah. It's amazing.